the rear grip kit is a solution. It's a solution to tail happy S197 Mustangs. And anybody that's got an S197 Mustang, put their foot down, going around the corner, know exactly what I'm talking about. So the rear grip kit is a solution and actually is a completely engineered system. Every part in the system is engineered to work with another part to get to the final result. And I'll kind of go over that briefly, but the reason I'm bringing it up again is because our good friend Wes, the uncle who's an, a really stand-up guy, really talented, put a how-to video, video together on installing a rear grip kit. And to show how easy it is, he did it in his driveway on jack stands. And he also put in a shameless plug for Kenny Brown uh, uh, jacking rails, which, which you'll see in, in, the, uh, in the video just how incredibly valuable they are. But he just put it on in his, his driveway, and it's, it's pretty easy, and it really works. And the reason it works, engineering geometry. Uh, where to start? Okay, every piece, like every single piece of this, this package has an, has an input, positive input on improving the rear suspension geometry. The sort of top and work down, our upper control arm, and you can see that's pretty beefy. It's got a big three quarter inch rod end, uh, and it's a uh, FK, it's a real high quality FK rod end. And because it's up high, I don't know if you can see that we put seals that's on it. Uh, which is because it's really hard to uh, service and clean if it's way up there in, in the car. So we put seals that's on it to do that. And also, if you notice, the uh, the arm is bent. And I think everybody else in the aftermarket has a straight arm. Well, if, you, if you're running a car low, a track car low, and you hit a big, big bump or go off track and hit a big bump, that control arm is going to hit the tunnel. That's why we curve this so there's enough room for you to have a big bounce and uh, not... Hit, hurt the control art more of the tunnel. Also, it's longer than standard, and the pickup point is a lot different, which supports the side view geometry, uh, which is the instant center, which is anti-squat and anti-dive. We'll get into more of that in, in, in coming uh, it, uh, episodes. Uh, this is the this is the traction lower traction extra traction uh, grip, and what it does is it moves the pickup point for the control arm four inches down. And by doing it, moving this four inches down and moving the upper control arm down, it brings the instant center, which in a lowered Mustang is out in front of the car, and instant center is where you get your anti-squat geometry, and it brings it all the way back sort of the middle of the car, so we get good anti-squat. And as you know, anti-squat means anti-lift. So not only does it give you good traction off the corner, but it holds the back of the car down under braking, and, and anybody that's really hit the brakes hard on a stock Mustang knows how badly the back of the car wants to jump up. So that's another part that's engineered. To go with that is the lower control arms. And for lower control arms, I actually dropped down to a, a 5 h rod end. The reason for that is three-quarter inch rod ends are big and heavy, and it's pretty much overkill. Also, most three-quarter rod ends that are used in the aftermarket are kind of two-piece, which are a form. It's, you know, they're, they're okay, but they're not really high-performance rod end. These are super high-grade FK rod ends. And you notice there's a difference on the spacers on either end. Well, the reason for that is the stock control arms, if you look down, they're splayed out the front. Well, without getting too detailed, by splaying out the front, if you were to draw line back to the point of convergence and then line through the roll center, it's pointing up in the air, which you don't want that. By making them parallel, and what this does is straightens them out and makes them parallel to center line. Uh, in every race car I've ever worked on, control arms are always parallel to the center line. By doing that, there is no point of convergence, which means the point of convergence is infinity, which means now the roll axis is parallel to the control arm. I know, it's a lot. But the also the other thing we do is, you know that little ring? What happens is, because we put the rod in so close to the end, just in case it wants to roll over, uh, either either at the chassis or at the back, this, this rubber ring is going to catch the, the rod end so it doesn't roll over and start clanging and banging. Okay, what are we down to? We're down to the uh, roll center relocation kit, which is probably, this is really, really important. I mean, here we talk about that before. We take the, this is the, uh, this is the axle side of the uh, roll center relocation kit and we move the the roll center down about four inches it goes from the center of the axle down to the bottom of the axle which is in my trans am days that's where we put the roll center on the live and the live axle that's about as low as you can get it's on, it's on the bottom of the diff 
and we did that with the watt slink horizontal that's a little hard to do in a car so bringing the panner bar does the same thing because where the panner bar crosses the center line of the car that's your roll center and as we talked before the roll center stock mustang is up high it's in the middle of the differential and i'm sure you've been driving around the corner you're going to a spirited corner and you know it kind of feels like that laugh inside uh, tire once the back of the car wants to get loose the tire wants to get it get soft well what this does it brings the roll center down so the car doesn't want doesn't want to roll up as much and what we do by bringing the rear roll center down the front roll center up it kind of flattens it out the, with the connection between the two so the roll around the corner is so much less and what that means is you can actually get back to the gas a lot sooner you don't have to wait as long for the axle to settle because that's that's a big thing going around a corner you hit the gas too soon and you overload the outside tire and you know you get happy loose uh, with this is that you're able to get to the gas sooner because you haven't rolled up as much and you kind of flatten that, that roll connection out and you can get to the gas I'm usually at, at, at least 50 75 percent on the gas before I hit the apex which gives me incredible uh, corner exit speed and corner exit speed is in, the faster your, your corner exit speed is the higher your terminal speed in the straightaway so you know getting a jump off the corner uh, makes you faster down the straightaway and I mean I'll give you a good example of that. You know, GT500s are great cars. Uh, they're really fast, but they've got a lot of engine and they've got a lot of weight in the front. So they're not going to be as nimble, which means in coming around the corner, I mean, it's just going to take them. They're not going to have quite as much grip in the front. They're going to have to slow down a little bit more. And then because of all the power and torque, they can't really get into the throttle heavily. They have to feed the throttle in. Well, because of that, in tracks like Road America, I mean, I come around the corners and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm in the gas right at the apex or before which means I'm carrying just a boatload of speed off the corner and I end up passing the GT 500s on the straightaway so it's not always about power you know real speed comes from the chassis and of course driving you have to learn how to drive so by moving the roll center down then we brought the roll center down in the combination of the lower roll center the instant center coming back to the center of the car which gives anti-squat and the control arms being straightened out which which improves the roll axis I mean everything works together and, and if somebody that we were talking to last week that was really skeptical of taking their sway bar off uh, trust me uh, with what the geometry does it negates the need for a real sway bar and I've had people in the past especially it was a group I was working with out in California they were they were running NASA and they put my suspension on and they didn't believe me on the on the rear sway bar so they put the rear sway bar on and uh, they took it off right away. I mean, they found out, well, that's not good. It makes the car loose. Uh, that was actually the team that we took into professional racing in uh, World Challenge. That was the, the Paul Walker and uh, uh, Rotos team, uh, the ever-evolving uh, turquoise cars, which are beautiful cars. Always evolving. Always evolving. That's what it is. So anyway, rear grip kit, if you, it's something every... S197 Mustang meets, whether it's a V6, a GT500, especially GT500, or a GT. It just, I mean, it just changes everything in how the car works. 